Hello, welcome back to the start of another weekly vlog. It is about noon on Saturday. We sort of slept in this morning. We stayed up late last night kind of just chatting and catching up because we hadn't seen each other in a week and a half. So we slept in this morning and then I got up and went and took a workout class at 10. Um, I talked about this in my goals video. There was a There's a dance workout class in the city that I love. And right after we got engaged, I bought like a 12 class package because I wanted to motivate myself to go and they expire in April so I needed to really get on it and so I'm trying to go once a week. I don't have to go every week to use them all but I have to go pretty consistently so I went to that and then I ran a couple of errands, came home, made myself some delicious avocado toast that I was inspired by my friend Jen over at Pretty Neat Living. She made this for me when I was at her house back over the holidays and it was just delicious. Very simple. It's literally toast and avocado. A scrambled egg and then the everything but the bagel seasoning from Trader Joe's um, but it was really good now I'm about to hop in the shower um, I'm not like sweaty anymore but because it's freezing outside but I just want to get out of these clothes and put something clean and comfortable on and then I will keep going with my day here's a quick look at what my calendar looked like for the day we can actually check some things off so I went and ran this errand and this errand after the workout class. Obviously I was supposed to start editing the vlog like an hour ago, but running the errands and then eating took up that 11 to 12 slot. I should have known better. So hopefully I can finish the vlog in two hours. Um, we'll see, I haven't actually imported the footage, so I don't know how long it's actually gonna be, but hopefully I can get it done um, in those two hours. And then these are all the other things I have to do today. I've already done a couple of them. I did some of them last night. Um, the wash brushes and the unroll me, I did all that last night. So. That is what my day is looking like right now. Clearly filming flusters my face. Um, I just got done filming a little bit behind schedule today because for a couple of reasons. One, editing the vlog definitely took longer than I thought it was going to. Um, I forgot that I had recorded my entire presentation, which I was, I, there was no way I was gonna include the entire thing because I, th that is just unfair. I feel like I should include highlights and little snippets to give you an idea, but it was really the content is reserved for people who were at that event or maybe at a future event. So I didn't, you know, include everything, but there was just a lot to edit. And then I was about to sit down to film and I realized the dishwasher was still running. So that wasn't good because it would have been really loud and annoying. So then I was waiting for that and I started working on my analytics, but I also maybe have watched an episode of SAU. Um, yeah. So now it is six and the things I have left to do today are finish my 2019 analytics, which probably needs another 30 minutes or so. I need to start working on my December daily. At least I was on the list to start working on it. And then I also need to cook dinner. Um, Sam is on his way home right now. <laughs> Obviously all those things are not going to happen. So I'm going to clean up from filming and then wait for him to get home, see how hungry he is. And then either cook and eat and do that and then do the other stuff or do some other stuff and then cook and then eat. We'll see. We'll see where the night takes us. It's snowing outside so I know it's definitely not taking us outside this apartment. Update. I still haven't cleaned up anything. There's now a kitty on my lap and I texted Sam asking how hungry he was because I was debating if I should start cooking or if I should work on something else and he goes well I can cook and I was like that's the best answer. So I'm gonna clean up and then start working on something and when he gets home, he will cook dinner. The best answer. Hello, happy Sunday. I just wanted to go ahead and check in. I've done a lot today already, truthfully, but I wanted to share some thoughts on scheduling out your time by the hour. I think there's a lot of pros and cons to breaking things down by the hour and I think I'm starting to figure out how to really make it work to my advantage but not detriment me and what i mean by that is i think that breaking things down by the hour is really more about thinking about how long things are going to take so that my schedule for the day is much more realistic so when i went to map out the day right i had that from this time to this time i was going to do this and this time to this time i was going to do that and it, it made me think about what i could fit into the day but then i found that when i actually go into doing the day i'm not necessarily going to do them in that order like the order that i put them in is just sort of either i thought it was right at the time or for whatever reason but some of it like it can totally go out of order based on what feels right at the moment so for example let me grab my planner actually so for example, today I started out um, with a yoga class that was at 10. So that obviously was at the time that it was slated on the calendar. 
And then I have on here that I went and got my eyebrows waxed right afterwards, which I'm impressed my skin's still a little pink, but it's not too bad. And then I was gonna clean the apartment, then I was gonna prep the vlog, then I was gonna meal prep, and like those, so those were the next three things. I'll tell you, I didn't do them in that order. And I will tell you, I did not do them in that order, and here's why. So when I got home from yoga and getting my eyebrows waxed, Sam and I were both very hungry, so I made us some brunch, I guess. It was technically breakfast. Neither of us had really eaten breakfast besides some fruit. So it was really breakfast. Um, and then once I was already in the kitchen, it just felt right to immediately go into the meal prep. So I started meal prepping. And then of course, while I was doing that, the HelloFresh box arrived. So it was perfect. I put all that away. And then I was done in the kitchen. Then I hadn't showered yet. So I figured, well, while I'm still kind of gross and sweaty from class, I'm gonna clean the apartment. So then I did the apartment stuff, which is what I had originally slated. So I just kind of moved things around based on that. And then I had getting ready, I moved it down here to the bottom before our dinner tonight, but I was like, I'm gonna shower now so that my hair can dry. So I showered and then I prepped the vlog. And so now we're a little bit behind. So I'm supposed to be starting my one little word class 30 minutes ago, so a little bit behind, but I did make some significant progress on my December daily, which I'll talk about in a minute. So I think I'm gonna be okay and be able to get everything done that I wanted to get done today, which is really exciting. But I just wanted to touch on that for a second. Um, one thing that I wanna show you before I talk about December daily are my notes pages for my Moxie Life Planner. Actually, let's do it over here. The desk is a mess, but the lighting is much better. So I mentioned two plan with me's ago, I would show it in my next plan with me, and then even in that plan with me, I said, I'm gonna show you my notes pages, and then I totally forgot to show them in that plan with me. So I'm gonna show them to you now. Um, let me flip, flip you around here. Here's today in my planner. All right, so I did one that's just sort of generic future goals and dreams. So this I just wanted a space to, when I think of things that I would want to maybe put on a future goals or part of a future power sheets, but I didn't want, like it's not gonna happen this year. There's just no way this year is packed and there's just no way. It might not even happen next year, but I wanted to go ahead and put that down. And then I have a page to start my New York City bucket list. We are not moving anytime soon, but just I wanted to start thinking about all the things that I haven't done in New York that I wanna do before we do leave. Then I have, these are pages that I've had before, so I have gift ideas both for me and gift ideas for other people. So as I come up with things that I want, you know, it is hard because sometimes when I see something I want, I just buy it right away. But what I've tried to be better about is putting it on this list. That way when people ask for gift ideas or I need to reward myself for something, I can pull from this list. And then gift ideas for others. Sometimes it's very specific. If you saw last year's, there were some very specific gift ideas for like Sam and my mom that I used for the holidays. And so now I'm starting over. This is just a generic idea that I got from the marketplace at the Carolina Inn in December. Then I made a page for foods that I wanna try cooking. These two were just very specifically inspired by China, two things that I have never really cooked at home before, and I don't really usually order them at restaurants here in America, but I loved them in China, so I wanna try cooking them at home. And then a page for apartment projects. Now projects is probably not the right word for all of these. Some of them it's just like a 15 minute like reorg. Um, but I wanted to go ahead and put, just get all these out because it was it was in my head, it was taking space in my head and it needed to get down the paper. That's all I have for now. The two lists that I'm still thinking about creating are places that we wanna travel. And I, I originally was gonna put it down and here's why I think I might keep that actually in my phone. That's not something we're gonna check everything off this year. Right? Like it, that's not gonna happen. This is an ongoing forever list. So I don't wanna have to rewrite it every single year. And then movies, I'm torn as well because I don't, I don't really watch a whole lot of movies at home, truthfully. If, if it's important enough to see in theaters, great. If I'm watching it with my family, great. But we don't really watch a lot of movies at home. And so I felt like, is this list really encouraging me to do something that I don't really wanna spend my time doing? Like there are movies that I wanna see or movies that I saw previews for and then never saw them in theaters. So I don't know, those are the two that I'm debating because there's still um, quite a few notes pages left that I could do something with. But if I don't end up using them, that's okay too. Well, let's talk for a second about December Daily. This is the status that I left my desk in last night. I actually, I think I mentioned this before, but Charlie really likes to chew on things that are plastic. So I put a blanket over top of it so that she could not get to it. Anyways, so December Daily, I had five days left, the 21st through the 25th. And so what I did first 
before I even started messing with anything was figure out what pictures I wanted to get printed. So I started with like on the back of day 20 was going to be a full picture. So I looked at the, you know, the story I wanted to tell for day 21 and I printed out a full size picture. And then I, I picked the pictures that I wanted and the, the type of page protector I wanted for, for 21. And then for 22, it was just whatever's on the back of that. So some of them are a little bit more like, intentional that I'm picking the page protector and some of them are just the result of what they're on the back of. And so I kind of just went through that whole process and then I sent all my pictures and picked them up from CVS. And then the first thing I did was just put them all in the page protector. So I picked all the page protectors and I have all my extras over here. I need to figure out what I'm going to do with those. But I went ahead and put all the pictures and cut them and put them in the page protectors. Then I went through and did the actual like papers. So like this one needed a four by six. So I flipped through my four by six and because I'm talking about ornaments, I use this little ornament one and I picked, you know, I picked all the papers that were going to fill in the space in the page protectors. Then I flipped all the way back to the beginning and started working on the embellishments. So I started pulling things from all my little, you know, embellishment trays here and started filling in all of those things. So it was just sort of the process that I went through. And I went through all the pages twice. So I pulled some stuff out and then I kept flipping and then I went back and kind of refined it. I did not stick anything down last night. I did not stick anything down. I did not write any words. I just sort of laid everything out. So here's what I'm going to do today to hopefully finish up my December daily. I'm going to flip through and look at the embellishments I pulled out last night and just re-familiarize myself with that. Then I'm going to go through all of my December daily product. I'm either going to put it into this box. So if it is very like Christmas holiday specific, I'm going to put it back into the box that it came in and I'm going to put that away for the rest of the year because I'm not going to need that till December. And then if it's something that's somewhat generic that I could use in a different time of the year, like, you know, obviously the Santa is probably not, the Mary is not, the Noel is not, but these little stars, like I could use that any time of year. So I'm gonna keep out all the things that can be used throughout the year, whether it's in my one little word project or anything else. So as I go through all of the stuff to either put it in the box or keep it out, I'm gonna think if there's anything else I wanna add. Then once I've done that, I will go through and stick everything down and write on all the pages to finish up the album. And then once I'm done, maybe I'll give you one final flip through. The other thing that's still on my to-do list today to get done before dinner is the One Little Word class. Not the actual project that's on tomorrow's list, but the class is on today's. So I, part of me wants to try and multitask. It's probably not a great idea and watch the class while I'm doing this. But given that they're two totally different projects, it's probably not the best use of my time. I'm going to set it up and see what happens. If I feel like I'm not giving it its full attention, then I'll just put a podcast on and, and finish up December daily and then pivot to one little word. I think I also had those backwards in my plan or not backwards, but flip flapped in my planner to do. Yeah, I was going to do the one little word and then December daily. But given that all the December daily stuff is out part of December daily, which I have on here is also supplies and switching out all the December daily stuff for all the one little word stuff. So I kind of want to do December daily, finish it, cross it off, be done with it, and then move on to one little word. And given the time, if that means that I don't really even finish the one little word class today and I can't work on it till tomorrow, like that's okay. Okay, it's about time for me to start getting ready for dinner. So I thought I would show you what I did. I did get a lot done, um, not near as much as I wanted to, but I'll go ahead and show you. For the December daily, I finished everything except the actual writing. I found that that's the hardest part for me is the actual like writing, journaling, probably just means I need to do it more, but that's the only part that I haven't done yet. I just, I felt like I would be doing it to check a box and not actually what I wanna say. So I'm actually gonna save that for tomorrow. So this first one is, not from the 20th like and that's this day it's from the 21st so i need to fix that but this is me asking my mom and my sister to be in the wedding so my mom is gonna be my matron of honor and my sister is my maid of honor so i did this full picture of just the ornaments with some little stars and then i included this little five by eight vellum see-through quote i got this pack just for these quotes and then i didn't even end up using them all and i feel a little bit like ugh. i just i learned a lot this year about what i use and what i don't um, so then on this page, I have the two pictures. I have the pictures of us and then the pictures of our wine. Cause they also, I also got them wine glasses that say mother of the bride and sister of the bride. And then I use this ornament paper piece. And then I sort of just did a circle theme. So this one says 
bring on the twinkle. This one says the heart of Christmas. And then this one says best part of today. And I just did some circles. All right. And then on the 22nd, which I don't have a number on here because I'm going to write the date. This is when I went out to hang out with my friend Jen. So we took a workout class. That's a picture of my Apple watch. And then she made us breakfast. It's a picture of breakfast and then my little tea. So I put these extra stickers here partially because I really liked this one with the heart. Um, I just felt like it was really applicable. And then um, I'm going to write in the space here. This one I kind of used to balance it, but also to take up space because I'm not really sure if I have that much space worth of stuff to write, but we'll see. I may have to write big or leave space on this one. And then the 23rd was when my family went and played a whirly ball. So I have this selfie that I took with Sam. We didn't actually take a family picture of all of us together. Um, I took this picture of Sam actually on the little, it's basically a bumper car that you drive around while you play whirly ball and then a picture of our dessert that was delicious and then I used this one this was actually a five by eight like a full five by eight that I cut in half um, and then I put this little sticker that says making Christmas awesome and then I'm gonna write the rest of that and then Christmas Eve I just did a bunch of pictures I don't actually really have any space to write on Christmas Eve because I feel like the pictures kind of speak for themselves um, I've explained this in a couple of videos but either Christmas Eve night or Christmas Day night we have just the four adults all the other kids are with their other parents so it was just the four of us we went out to dinner these are our drinks from dinner and then these are our drinks from like a Christmas themed bar that we went to and then we also went to a Hanukkah themed bar um, I just added I added this one so that I could add the 24 and then I added added this one to kind of offset it. And then I included this little star vellum. Again, this was just because I felt like I wasn't using them and I wanted to get them into the album. And then I did a full picture of Sam and I by the tree in the lobby before we left. And then I sort of mimicked what I did at the beginning with the stars next to the tree. So there was this Christmas Eve star that I knew I wanted to use because this was Christmas Eve. And then I sort of did the same thing here. I'll flip back all the way back to vlogmas in case you don't remember. This is what I did to start. The whole thing was kind of very similar. All these like little stars next to the tree. Oh, I couldn't do that with one hand. So I just kind of did the same thing here and just did some stars. And then this is the Christmas. So the Christmas one's pretty in depth because there was a lot of pictures. So I'm actually going to start here with the 12. Actually, I'm going to start on the back and then that's how I got to the rest of this. So let's start back here. I knew that I wanted to include our family photo that we took actually on the 26th. I'm not going to actually write that it was on the 26th because that doesn't matter. But I knew I wanted to include it somehow. And I also really wanted to do one of these like the whole picture gets cut into the little two by two squares. I've been wanting to do this for a very long time. So I was finally able to make that happen and I just made that my last page. So I knew that the end was gonna be these two by two squares. So then for actual Christmas day, I got all these pictures printed in two by twos, a ton of pictures printed in two by twos. And then I sort of like mapped them out on this page and I really liked this sort of every other look that I'd kind of ended up with. So then I was like, well, there's still some pictures like that I didn't put here that I still want to include. I actually had the people one over there and was cutting out another one. These are the ones that were getting cut, so to speak. And so they were, for a while, they were just going to get cut. And then when I was flipping through the full page papers, I was actually looking for one of the quote pages to put here, but I found this wreath one and I thought, well, that's perfect. So what I did was I cut the two by twos into little circles. I just literally used a roll of washi to outline this, by the way, and hand cut it. I don't have a circle punch. So I cut all the pictures and I put them in. This is actually the same picture. This is one side and this is the other side. And then I did the 25 here. And then I also knew I wanted to include a picture of the tree. So I did this three by eight little inside that's got a picture of my mom's tree with all the presents under it. And then on this side, I have the picture of Sam and I, and then this little Merry Christmas rubber piece. The other thing about this page was I really wanted to include this. This is a rubber piece. It was actually a tag with like a little hole that you would tie a ribbon in, but I didn't really know how to use it as a tag. So I actually just cut it it took quite a few runs through the paper cutter into a two by two square. And then it was still a little bit thick to stick it into the pouch. So I actually just like red line taped it to the outside of the pouch, which was, I thought was kind of funny, but anyways, so that is the end of it. That's my whole album. I do need to, um, go back and write and I need to fix, I need to fix this number. I'm going to leave it open so that I remember to fix this number. So then what I did, I didn't actually start. This is my one little word album. I didn't actually do the class or start anything related to the project except for organizing supplies. So put all my extra very Christmassy December related stuff into that Christmas box. And then I moved in to my storage 
with all of my other stuff. And I really like the way that it turned out. So I thought that I would share that with you. I have a whole video going through all of these different pieces back when I organized my December's daily stuff. And I decided to encourage the memory keeping and the scrapbooking that I would keep them here and just replace them with the non Christmas stuff. So these top ones are actually little trays. So this tray, besides being like the oversized stuff, is mostly just colorful stuff. So everything that I purchased that has more color to it, I have unboxings of like all this stuff in other videos. This one has all of the neutral stuff. So it's got um, anything that's like a wood veneer or the cork board or like this white stuff. So anything that is super neutral is in that one. And then this tray is the month specific. So this is my January kit, which I unboxed, I think that was two weeks ago, a vlog two weeks ago. So this is the January monthly kit. And so each month I will keep the monthly kit all together in this tray. So that is all stacked on top of there. And then the drawers, the first drawer is all of my one little word stuff. So I am struggling hard to get this back open. Um, trying not to freak out, but I don't have time to mess with it right now. So this drawer is all the one little word stuff. I don't want to mix all the cards or the stickers in with everything else and then use them and not have them for one little word. So at least for the year that it is, I'm going to keep it here. And then at the end of the year, I'll mesh it all back in. I used the little pouch to store all the little pieces for one little word since the drawer doesn't have any like dividers, but it's not opening. This drawer is all of the papers, all the different size papers that are specific. Most of these are either from the travel kit or the food kit that I purchased from Allie Edwards. And then same thing here goes with when the month is over. So any of the January papers, if I don't use them in January, they will go in this drawer. This drawer has all of kind of the vellum and the dividers and stuff like that. These are again, mostly from travel or the food kits that I purchased um, separately from Allie Edwards website. And then same thing. Well, there really isn't any vellum or dividers in the monthly stuff, but the one little word stuff at the end of the year. And then the bottom two drawers are actually a kit that I bought from Amazon. That's a project life kit, but it's super neutral. It's got some yellow and some orange, but for the most part, it's pretty neutral. Um, I just kind of wanted it to supplement everything else. So I've got this drawer that has the four by six and then this drawer that has the three by fours. And again, they're all just kind of neutral stuff. I bought it on Amazon. I looked at a lot of Project Life stuff on Amazon, but I decided to go with this one first. And then the last, certainly not least, is this giant stack of stickers. And for December daily, I was keeping them in one of the trays, but now I'm actually going to put them in a binder and page protectors, just like I store all of my planner stickers, because then I can flip through and easily find them. I think that will just make me so much happier. It was always frustrating during December daily to have to go through all of the stickers. So I am not going to be able to do that today because I really do need to go get ready for dinner. But tomorrow the plan is to organize the stickers, watch the one little word video, and then do the one little word project as well as write all the words and actually complete December daily. Let's talk about procrastination. I got a lot done today. It is so nice to have a day off, an extra day of the weekend. I didn't have to go to my full-time job. I will say my day started off with procrastination by sleeping in. Sam and I went to bed at our normal like weeknight time with the intention of getting up at our normal weekday time. And when the alarm went off, we both looked at each other and we were like, it's not happening. I didn't sleep well. He is still trying to adjust to getting up earlier after being at home for so many weeks. It just didn't happen. So we didn't end up getting up until like eight something. But after that, we were both very productive. We both, I mean, we chugged through a lot of things on our to-do list today. And eventually he went into the office and I kept chugging, except for one thing. One thing that I had on my to-do list on Saturday, which I didn't do because of the weather. That was a decent reason. And then I moved it to yesterday. And then I didn't do it yesterday for God knows what reason. I think I kept running out of time. And then today I was going to do it first thing in the morning. And then I was like, no, I'm going to wait until after I have this call because I don't want to have to go mess with it during the call. And so then I was like, I'll start it right after the call. And then the call ended and here we are three hours later. And I finally started it. Can you guess it's the laundry and it is not just a normal laundry. So normally I do laundry every two weeks, which for the two of us is somewhere between three and four loads, depending on how many outfit changes he had, how many outfit changes I had, whether or not I rented everything that week. Because I am washing the sheets and the towels and clothes from like forever, it is going to end up being eight loads of laundry. 
I just went and started for the four washers that we have. We actually have five, but one was in use. So I started four and I have enough for another four. So what I thought was gonna be a one hour project and that's why I kept like saying you could push it off, which by the way, when I say it's one hour, it's one hour wash and dry and then it takes me a good, at least 30 minutes more to put it all away. It just extended itself. So anyways, I just feel the need we need, I don't know what the solution is. I don't know what the procrastination solution is. I don't know, it's it's really not that bad. Like, it, I keep pretending like it's the worst thing in the world and so I put it off and I put it off. But like, once I actually do it, it's not that bad. And so why do we push these things off that really are not that hard or that time consuming? Like, t fully waiting for it to finish is time consuming, but the actual act of me carrying the, the bags, which by the way, it was four bags, which should have given me a heads up to carry down there. Like it's in the basement of the building. So I had to make two trips and then sorting all of it and getting it started was like 15 minutes. Why didn't I do this like eight hours ago when I said I was going to do it? But it started, it's fine. And now I'm gonna edit because that's the other thing I need to finish up today. The one thing I did make significant progress on today is my one little word project. So I both watched the class that Allie had. It was probably about an hour total of content to watch. And then I worked on the project, which probably took another hour, hour and a half. But it's also my first time. There's also a lot going on for the January prompts and I didn't even finish it. But let me show you what I did do. So this is my cover page. It's really the first, so there's 12 of these clear dividers they have little tabs at the top but they don't say like January February anything on them so it's really the divider for January but it's since it's the first one I went a little bit more all out I almost mimicked exactly what Allie did in hers so these clear hearts all of the just the actual hearts and all the different shades of gray and black those were part of the actual kit for this year and so she put those all around on her front page and then she used these colored hearts that are part of the quarterly kit, which I did not get. So I went ahead and pulled out any other heart that I had throughout my stash of stuff or anything that said love. So I had this, this was left over from December Daily. Um, this was, I, I don't even know, like this word love and then these two hearts. Anything that was a neutral colored heart like these or had the word love on it, I pulled out and then I sort of just arranged them onto the front page and then I added these stickers that say 2020, although they're not sticking super well and since there's nothing to protect them, I'm not sure they're gonna last forever. So I might try and figure something else out there, but I really love how this page turned out. I think it's fun. I know she used the hearts cause that was just part of the kit, but it really does apply for me with the word, my word of the year is love. So I thought it was perfect to just sort of duplicate this. I saw a lot of people in the Facebook group duplicate this with a different shape that applied more to their words. So some, I saw people use stars. I saw some people use flowers. Like I saw the same concept with different shapes depending on what your word was, but I obviously went ahead and did hearts. Then came the actual prompts. Now, um, I didn't do it exactly the same way she did. I actually ended up using this little three by eight insert and then one of the six by eights. And that's because I decided I wanted to include pictures. So she actually didn't include pictures for this first go round this year. And she had a lot of reasons. She's going through a lot of health things that are kind of influencing her project. But I decided I wanted to use pictures. So I scrolled through my Instagram and took any picture that I had posted of me by myself this year to be like my photo. So I started with this one. I put this one first because I liked the neutrality of like the intro page and then the color will come later. And then I also obviously started with the first card just being where you list the word and I use stickers for that one. And then on the back of this, I put the quote one and then the define. So I just filled these out. And then on this side, I did two more. So I have note to self and reason why. And then I loved this card that says you are exactly where you need to be. And then another picture of myself with a little sticker that says living with purpose. So one of the things that I didn't do that she did was incorporate the January products that were part of the kit. So she had both these three by four clear sheets and then these little January um, like white wooden pieces and she had put these in a pocket so she didn't use all of the prompts like the note to self and then she didn't have any pictures so that's the only one I think she cut in order to keep this clear piece. I decided not to use this and the biggest reason is because I have this set that I got it was part of last year's one little word and I, I can't remember if I bought it separately or if it came in my like oops thing but I thought that these little heart months would be perfect since it's a heart and my word of the year this year is love. So I'm just gonna save these. I'll either end up using them in another year or I'm gonna use them in my like normal memory keeping. 
So I haven't stuck this heart down yet because Part of me kind of wants to put it here, like right in the middle, and I need to adhesive these back to each other. I ran out of adhesive roller, so I have to do that first before I stick it down. I also am thinking maybe putting it like over here. I also thought about putting it over here. I haven't really decided yet where I'm going to put this little heart, so I haven't, I haven't put them anywhere yet. And then on the back of this, I have two more pictures. So these are two pictures from my recent speaking engagements. And I put making progress since that is a big focus of mine. And then invite and let go. So those are kind of all the beginning of the year prompts. And then there's this one full page. So we have the year ahead and it's got a couple of different prompts that you fill out. Truthfully, I was surprised at how easily this all just kind of flowed out of my head. And then this one I ended up decorating a little bit in the corner. And then the one piece I haven't done is the intentions page. And I think I just need a little bit of time to sit with it because I haven't really thought about it and I'm not ready to put it down on paper yet. I, I feel like I'm also copying Allie because she didn't do hers yet either because she's waiting on some health news. For me, I just, I feel like I need some more time. And one of the big tips that I got for a newbie was to watch the video at the beginning of the month and then take a couple of weeks to let the, the, the prompts sink in before you write. And I did not have time to do that this month. I was going to. I was going to watch the video a few weeks ago and I didn't. So since I just watched it today, I felt like I would give myself a little bit of grace and wait and fill this in either as part of February's or just do it maybe next weekend um, after I've had some time to think about it. But that will be the end of January and then we will start with February next month. Hello. Happy Tuesday. I am on my way. It's going to sound so funny to a beauty product launch event. I know what you're thinking. You don't talk about beauty products. How on earth did you, did you get invited? And the truth is, I have no idea. They sent me an email, like some representative of the beauty company sent me an email saying, hey, we're having this event in New York. We noticed you're in New York. Would you like to come? And what's funny, I talked about this in my plan with me, but the like actual invite that she attached, like the PDF or photo that she attached to the email, um, the RCP by date was before she sent me the email. So I think I was on like the second wave of invites. I don't, truthfully, I don't care. Um, and I almost was gonna say no because I was like, well, I want my Tuesday night to like do things. But then also like, kinda wanna see what it's all about. I feel like I've seen pictures of these things or videos on beauty people that I follow. And so I wanna see if it's really all that fancy or if it's really just Kind of not. I don't know. I'm just really, really curious. So that is where I'm headed now. To get us started with our night tonight, we have Michelle Lee, who is the editor in chief of Allure and also the host of Allure podcast, that will be speaking to our now and new celebrity spokesperson, Kiki Palmer, who is an actress and singer on and off camera, literally killing things. And later on in the conversation, Michelle will also be interviewing Dr. Sheila Farahan, who you all will also have the time to talk to afterwards. She's a celebrity dermatologist who will talk about common skincare myths and misconceptions that you may or may not know. What time, what time do you wake up in the morning? Okay, so if it's a workout day, I'm waking up at 5 a.m. Me too! Right, I'm gonna finish this Yeah! So, you know, I work out, get up at 5, uh, you know, done at 5, so I do an hour, so I'm done at 6, I shower, I'm gonna use my way by. Uh, get out of the shower, head over to work about 6.30. Um, get in there with my glam team, me on the hair, and me on the makeup, and on the hair, jazz on clothes, you know, get to what I get to, my, my what they call it, the T's. We do our GMA T's by like 8.45. By 9.15, I'm in my prep with executive producers, and my co my two co-hosts, which we usually just hang out, talk about what we did over the weekend, what we're going to talk about on the show. And then by 9.45, I'm out there on stage, and we do the show, and it goes by like 
lightning speed, and time flies when you're on the phone. And then you're done. And then we're done it. My day is over at 11 or 11.30. Wait, I want to hear more about the college. Yeah. <laughs> Don't we all? So when we're losing the 1%, yeah. is it that, are we losing it at the same rate when our face and not on our body? Yeah, so um, if you think of collagen, it is the structure of our skin. So as you think about it, the decrease in the collagen, that's what's causing the sagging. That's what's causing that dull appearance. That's what's causing those wrinkles. And that just inevitably happens. But then adding those radical things, such as, and we'll talk about lifestyle as well, that affects it too. Um, that uh, really just plays a part into that. Hello, happy Friday. I wanted to pop on and quickly chat about something that I know we've talked about before, uh, but I wanted to bring it up again, and that is that time is valuable. Time is more valuable than money. Time is the most valuable thing, the most valu valuable commodity that you have. And I've done two things this week that have prioritized time over money. And the first one is going to get my nails done. So yesterday, I went back to getting my nails done. I know that I said once I was done traveling, I was gonna go back to actually just painting them myself and stop getting the gel. But I am a, such a bad picker. Like, I pick at my nails all the time. And I was finding myself repainting them almost every other day. And it, it, that is a waste of time. So I kind of, I literally did the math. I didn't kind of, I did the math saying that if I got my nails done every two weeks, if that saved me seven times of painting my nails at 30 minutes a pop, that's three and a half hours. Is the cost of the gel manicure worth three and a half hours of my time? Yes, the answer is yes. So I went and got them done and that's that. Um, and then the other thing is going to Whole Foods instead of Trader Joe's. And I've, I know I've talked about this one before. Um, I love Trader Joe's and they have some food that I really love. And they're definitely the least expensive option here in the city, but it is a pain to get to. I, it's, it's not necessarily a pain to get to, it's like a 10 minute walk from my office, but then it's a pain to get home. Um, I either have to like, it's just a pain. It's either a lot of walking with the groceries or it's like an hour trip home. So. I'm going to Whole Foods because we don't need that many things. Like the list is pretty short and it's just so much closer. Like it literally saves me probably an hour and a half to go to Whole Foods instead of Trader Joe's. I know that's insane, but like that's just New York. So anyways, that is where I'm headed now. First stop, Whole Foods. All right, I am home and the last piece of this vlog is going to be sharing my monthly subscription that I got from Allie Edwards. Um, I'm really excited about this. I haven't used my January one yet. I talked about that in a few places. It is going to be, I'm pretty sure, on my attending list for next month's goals to do January's memory keeping, which will you know include using the kit. So then I will actually feel like I can give more of an opinion on it besides just opening it with y'all. Um, but I'm really excited. This is currently the only subscription that I'm really getting consistently. I've canceled everything else. That's a lie. I also am going to get Fat Fit Fun, but that's a quarterly subscription. This is the only monthly subscription that I'm currently getting in the mail. Um, so let me show you. So this month it came with these little wooden hearts. So, so I'm trying to get a feel since I'm brand new. I probably could go back and look at stuff if I really wanted to know what is consistent about each month and what's like different. So this one looks like there's five different size little wooden hearts. Last month it was a wooden 2020. So I don't know if every month it's gonna be something wood like that or if it's just like an extra decorative embellishment and it just happens to two months in a row be wood. Again, it came with some stamps, which I'm not like, not a big stamper, but I was looking at the January ones again when I was sort of organizing my, my stuff earlier this week or last weekend, whenever. It was part of this vlog, I know that much. And I think I'm gonna try and challenge myself to use that stamp set. I don't think I'm gonna try and like use any other stamps that I own, because I have a lot of them, but I think I'm gonna try and use the set that comes with the monthly kit. So again, it came with a chipboard set, a bunch of little different February phrases, and this is the color scheme for February. Super cute, I love that. And then it came with a four by six quote card, just like last month. Um, this one says, I love you more than anything, which I think is really cute. And then it came with a pack. This was all sealed up in plastic that I opened up of both four by six and then three by four. And I'll quickly flip through them. But just like prior months, Allie Edwards, who creates these products, does have a full like flip through and sort of like explanation of her thought process. Oh, these are stickers. Just kidding. That's not part of the four by six. It did also come with a set of heart stickers with a bunch of different phrases on it in those same colors. 
Um, anyways, as I was saying, she does have a full flip through of the products on her YouTube channel. So if you want like a top down flip through of all the products, you can check that out on her channel. And then these are the three by four cards. So we got these flowers, this little, what does it say? Love wins. That's really cute. This like kind of listy type one, another little patterned one. We have February, the story of right now. I love this quote, the colorful on the black. It's cute. Loving these things. February memories. There was a very similar card in the January one and then that's it. So it's not a super pricey kit um, because it doesn't come with all that much. But my plan is sort of to use, but my plan is to use these kits as the basis for telling some January stories that aren't incredibly elaborate and need like me to pull from the travel stuff or what like it's stuff that is just like a quick one page thing that happened in January. So for January, like probably that Ole event, I took a couple pictures there. I'll probably document that with some of the January product. Um, China will all be lumped together with China. The I might do the wedding that we went to in Houston. I might include that as part of the January. The Sunshine State Planners, I might pull some of the January, but I also might do a lot just the of the travel stuff and just kind of generic um it kind of depends i think on how much is going on in a given month i i think i will definitely always try and attack a whole month together so i will basically at the at the end of this month i will go through all of my the photos i took in january and sort of sort through what things i want to document and then kind of look through and you know based on the amount of stuff that comes with this i could probably do three or four different things with these products um and then just pull in supporting materials as needed but we will cross that bridge when we come to it hopefully next month i feel like this blog was very memory keeping heavy so i hope that you enjoyed this i'm actually proud of myself i have a pretty productive evening plan and i am skipping a work happy hour to do so which i i actually love this happy hour I have a love-hate relationship with it. I love that it's on Fridays because most happy hours happen to not be on Fridays. I like that it's on Fridays, but at the same time, because it's on Fridays, I usually have more than I should. But the other thing that I kind of love hate is it is this massive happy hour because it has been forwarded by so many people because the way that Microsoft Outlook works is that if you add somebody to one in particular event, so like one time I was chatting with a friend and I said, hey, are you on this like massive New York Life happy hour? And she was like, no. So I forwarded it to her. Then she got added to the list. So now every time the guy sends out another happy hour invite, she's automatically included. And so because of that process, it has grown to like, I, I don't I don't know upwards of like 200 people like 20s and 30s within the company which is so much fun it can be so much fun if I'm in the mood for it uh, but I'm just not I'm not in the mood because I'm going out of town next weekend I really just wanted to be productive and I have a happy hour both next week and the week after that are both much more important to me for various reasons so I was like you know what I'm gonna skip this week's happy hour I'm gonna be productive and then I'm gonna go to the other two that I really do want to go to now I'm actually gonna close out the vlog so that is gonna be the end if you liked this video please give it a thumbs up if you're new here please click that subscribe button I upload new videos every Monday Wednesday and Friday thank you so much for watching Happy planning. And for those of you that asked for more of Charlie. Oh, there's a sweet kitty. There she is. Oh, can you hear her purrs? Oh, look at that sweet kitty face.